Hello and welcome to the DRC's module. In this module, we will run the assigned design rules for our PCB to validate the layout. The design rule checker is run from the tools pull down menu, design rule check option. The design rule checker window has a number of features. For this lesson, we will use a modified version of the DRC setup. Clicking on the rules to check menu will reveal rules and their categories and show which rules are enabled for the checking. On the right of the pane, there are two columns, online and batch. The rules with check marks in the boxes are enabled for either online or batch, or both during the DRC. For this exercise, the DRCs for test points and signal integrity, as well as a few other rules, are not enabled. In this case, we are not concerning ourselves with these rules for our rather simple design. To run the entire set of enabled rules, Click on the Run Design Rule Check option at the bottom left. Looking at the report, we see a summary and a more detailed listing of the errors found. Most of these errors were added post-final routing to illustrate how to track down and resolve some of the typical errors found. As we can see, there are four rule violations. One unrouted net, two minimum solder mask slivers, and one silk-to-silk -silk clearance error. Scrolling down, we can view more details. Clicking on the unrouted net, we jump to the PCB and are zoomed into the violation. Note the connection line indicating the location of the unconnected net. To fix this, we simply add a trace between pins 4 and 2 of J1. We could, quite quickly, go through this short list of errors, but normally there could be many more violations. So we will use another panel and step through each possible error one by one without jumping between the verification report and the PCB. Click on the Panels button and then select PCB Rules and Violations panel. Moving to the PCB Rules and Violations panel, let's scroll down to the unrouted net constraint. We can review the violations by clicking on the entry in the panel. By clicking on the unrouted net constraint rule, we see the current violation in the bottom pane of the panel. Double clicking on the entry in the violations list opens up the violation details window for this rule. To locate the violation, click on the jump button and then click on the highlight button to momentarily highlight the violation. Click OK to close the window and route the missing track. Now we can rerun just an unrouted net rule by right clicking on it and selecting Run DRC Rule Class. As you can see, there are no error violations listed and the unrouted error marker in the PCB has cleared. Clicking on the Silt to Silt Clearance rule, we can run this rule to check the design. We see one violation. If we had not run the batch DRC check before, there would not be any violation showing. Clicking on the violation, we see that J1 and pin 1 text are too close. For illustration, let's double click on the violation and highlight it. Now we will move J1 away and rerun this clearance check. Notice when we moved J1, the violation was cleared from the violations list. That's because this rule was enabled for online or live checking. Once the violation condition is cleared, it no longer shows in the panel. Now moving on to the minimum solder mask sliver constraint, we see two entries. Double clicking on one of them, we see that the footprint for the oscillator does not meet the minimum gap distance. In this case, we will employ a waiver as this is a validated footprint. Check the wave violation box and if needed, fill out the reason. Hit OK. In the same way, we can now go ahead and waive the other violation for the oscillator. Moving up in the list of rule classes, we come to the component clearance constraint. Run this constraint by right mouse click. Notice we now have one component clearance violation in the list pane below. By selecting this violation, we can see highlighted in green that there is a clearance violation between connector J1 and capacitor C1, even though they appear to be far enough away from each other. However, if we select J1, we see that the footprint has a larger body than we would expect. The simple reason for this is, the part does not have a 3D body attached to the footprint. So the clearance rule uses all of the elements, including text associated with the part, as its outline area. We can see this by switching to the 3D view, that J1 does not have a 3D model associated to the footprint. For this exercise, we will ignore this and use a waiver on the violation. By running the full batch DRC, we now just see three waivers and zero violations. At this point, we are ready for fabrication.